The next story is going to be about something called Rocket Man. Once upon a time, there was a little boy and his daddy who lived in a nice house in the countryside. The daddy was very good at engineering and decided to make a rocket. Okay, I need the son get in. So, he built the rocket. It was a bit of like a tin can, but it was tall, very tall in the garden. And it went almost, it was higher than the house because there was a lot of space at the bottom for the fuel. Then, he invited his son, his little boy. No, 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 no. He did. You went, he went alone? No, he went with his son. He took his boy. No, he was alone. No. The daddy and the little boy got in the rocket. He went alone. And they got up in the rocket. And up and they lit the fuse. No, he went alone. You wanted to go alone? Yes. All right, he went alone then. Okay. The little boy stayed on Earth with his mummy. And daddy went up in space. So daddy lit the f asked the little boy to light the fuse. So the little boy lit the fuse. And the fuse and when it touched the rocket fuel, the rocket took off into space. Going, starting slowly, going faster and faster, 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 and away it went into space, higher and higher, flying away, and the daddy was up there, looking down on Earth. For a while, he could communicate with Earth. He could say he could he he had some devices where you could communicate, but as he went further and further away, it took days for the messages to reach him and days for his reply. And then it went further and further. It went to weeks and weeks. And out into space he went past the moon, past, the, past Mars, way beyond the sun. And as he flew away, the sun became smaller and smaller until it was nothing more than a little tiny yellow dot in the sky like all the other stars. Just one of the many stars in the sky. But still he kept going. Rockets keep going in a straight line. There's no way of turning round, you know. Why, Daddy? How would you turn a rocket round? There's no air up there, no friction. Quite hard. Anyway, after a while he saw a distant sun, which was just a pinprick in the sky, but it started to get bigger as he approached. As he got closer and closer in the rocket, he saw that there were some planets going round the sun. And some of the planets had moons going round the planet. Like our oh, planet. Some had two moons. Exactly, there were lots of planets going round the sun, and round some of the planets there were moons going round the planet. For example, you know, in our in our our, our um, solar system, one of the planets, I think it's, uh, well, I don't want to say because I'm not sure, but I think Jupiter's got a number of moons going round it. So we only got one moon for round the Earth, but some of the planets have got lots of moons. Anyway, cut a long story short, he saw a planet which looked like it was suitable to land on because it looked green and blue. Green means vegetation, like grass and trees, and blue could mean the sea. So that looks okay. And it was in the habitable zone, the right distance from the sun. So he flew his rocket down to land on the, on the planet and the rocket landed, just landed pointing up to the stars again. And then he put his sensors outside to see what the atmosphere was like. And do you know what? It had oxygen, just like you and I breathe. We breathe oxygen and there was oxygen on the planet. And it was just like our planet, some nitrogen, some oxygen. I think it's five parts nitrogen and one part oxygen, something like that on our planet, and it was just the same on that planet. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me different types of hair? Well, you mean different types of gas? Yes. Well, there's hydrogen, there's helium, there's oxygen. 
there's nitrogen and a few, I think there's a few other gases which I can't rem remember the names of. Well, probably quite a lot of gases, but I can't remember the names of most of them. Anyway, on this planet, the air was made up of the air we have on our planet. It's the same, nitrogen and oxygen. So he, after he tested the air, he found it was good. He opened the hatch to the space shuttle, that his base, base rocket, and breathed in. <gasps> it is just like planet Earth. And he looked around. He'd been in the sky, sailing through the space for months and months with nobody to talk to, nobody to see, couldn't even write back home anymore. No videos, nothing like sitting in a tin can, like an empty baked bean can. And then he climbed down the ladder to get on the ground and he stamped on the ground. It wasn't dust. And he looked around and there were green things growing, lots of plants. He couldn't see any animals. Why? He just didn't see any. And over in the distance, you could see a large lake, blue. And the sun was shining, the bright sun, bigger than our sun, because it was closer, shining brightly. And all the plants and the flowers were leaning up to the sun, gathering in the sunlight. And he thought, this looks like paradise. And he started walking, and then he saw a fruit tree. Well, there were big fruits on it, but they were nothing like what we've seen, not like oranges or bananas or pears or apples. He thought, I wonder if I can eat this. So he plucked the fruit and bit into it. <gasps> it was juicy and sweet, so delicious. Well, he could eat it. Why? And then he started to explore the strange planet. Of course, you can't explore the whole planet. You can only explore a little area near to his rocket ship. And suddenly, he saw some little creatures, no bigger than your monkey. Look a bit like your monkey, actually, about that size. And they walked up to him and said, and he thought, I wonder what they're saying. And he said, hello, I'm from Earth. Said the monkey. <laughs> well, of course, the monkeys don't speak English out in space. And he doesn't speak the language they speak. Then the monkey pulled out his gadget, which was no different from an iPhone. Wait. And started typing. And then the monkey typed, 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 typed. And suddenly, the monkey said, and the gadget said, translated it into English, the gadget said, are you from another planet? Who said that to it? The monkey asked the question, are you from another planet? But, and the, the man replied, yes, I come from the planet Earth. You can't see it. It's one of those stars up in the sky. You can't see the planet. Of course, it's too far away. And the machine then translated it back to the monkey. And the machine said, which means I'm from the planet Earth. Then the monkey said, why have you come here? Who well, said that? Well, the monkey said, and the machine said, why have you come here? Because it translated it. And the man said, well, I've come to explore strange and distant lands so I can tell the people back on Earth what it's like. And the machine translated back to the monkey. Quite a translation, eh? It was almost stuck in words. That's the machine, like an iPhone, but obviously it's a more sophisticated machine than we have on planet Earth. Much better than iPhone. And it translated everything. And then the man and the alien started to have a conversation. Well, of course, for the alien... The man was really the alien, the daddy was the alien, because the alien was just like a person on his planet. And apparently these monkey-like creatures were very, very bright and intelligent. Intelligent. Intelligent means they've got lots of brains, they can answer questions and do things and solve problems. So, the man, the daddy, said, Here's a picture of my little boy. 
and he pulled out a picture from his pocket of his little boy and showed the aliens, who thought they were not aliens, and the aliens then pulled out from their pocket a picture of one of their children and showed the alien, which is the daddy, what their children look like, like monkeys. Mm -hmm. It was a monkey's children. And then the yes, the monkey, well, monkeys have got babies. They look like baby monkeys. And then the aliens said, "Since you're from the planet Earth, do you have any cheese?" Well, well actually, they didn't say that. They said, "But now go do you want to walk away?" And the machine translated is, "Do you have any cheese?" And Daddy thought, "Hmm." Now I remember my wife, who I miss very much, my dear wife, made me some sandwiches. I wonder if there's cheese in my sandwiches. So he went back to the spaceship and found the sandwiches his wife made and unwrapped the tin foil and pulled away the bread and inside, sure enough, there was cheese. Now these aliens on the planet far, far away had never had cheese in their life. So he took the cheese out and said, here, this is cheese. Try it and see if you like it. The first alien took a bite. Ah! <coughs> Spat it out. So he said, well, try another one. Try it. Another alien tried it. Okay. Mm, quite nice. I'll have the rest. <coughs> and he ate the whole lot. Now, the man only had his bread left with no cheese. Then the first alien said, oh, what's that? And the man, oh, no, he didn't say what's that. He said, and the machine translated it as, what's that? And the, the man replied, this is bread. We make it with flour, which comes from the wheat. But the machine translated as, but the aliens understood that. And the alien wanted to try the bread. So he grabbed a slice of bread and started eating it. And he said, which means, hmm, this tastes rather nice. I'd like some more. So he took the other slice and ate it all. Now, the man was on the strange planet and suddenly he realised he'd got nothing to eat. Oh, yeah. Someone had eaten all his sandwiches. His cheese sandwiches had been eaten. Why? And he did miss his wife and he missed his little boy. And he thought about his little boy back on planet Earth. And how nice it would be if his boy was with him, because his boy could talk to the aliens too. What a shame. And he started to cry, thinking of his boy. <laughs> his tears were running down his cheeks. I wish my little boy was here to talk to the aliens with me. He'd so be so interested, he'd like it so much. And he cried and cried and cried. The aliens said, <laughs> Which means, why are you crying? <laughs> and he said, because I miss my son. And the alien said, <laughs> which means we understand, we have children too. We miss our sons when we're not with them. <laughs> and he showed the photograph of his son to the alien. The alien said, which means, don't worry, we'll show you how to get back to planet Earth. So the aliens, who were very clever, started to examine his space rocket and see what needed to be done to get all the way back to Earth. They said, which means, you need to be refueled. Why? And you need some repairs. So the aliens set to work to make his spaceship better ready to go back to Earth. And finally everything was ready and they exchanged photos. The aliens gave him some of their photos and he gave, he took some, he gave some of his photos from his family to the aliens to look at. And then he said goodbye to his friends on planet, whatever it was, let's call it planet uh, Ogledigook. No, let's call planet Range. Okay, planet strange. Strange planet. Strange planet. It was a very strange planet. So he said goodbye to his friends on planet strange, got into his rocket, and the aliens lit the fuse, and the fuse went zzzz. When it reached the rocket fuel, off took the rocket. Took off, heading 
straight back towards our solar system. Now he's going to pass many months of loneliness inside his space rocket. All alone, no videos, no TV, nobody to talk to, no internet, no books. Sitting alone in his tin can, or so it seemed. But over time, his rocket got, got within communications range of home. And as soon as it was within, within reach of home, he sent a message back home. It took a while to get there. It said, little boy, little boy, I'm coming home. I can't wait to see you. I hope you're waiting for me. But that took months and months to get there because even at the speed of light, which is the speed messages travel at, it takes a long time you're so far away. And eventually, after a few months, the message from his little boy came back and said, Daddy, I'm much bigger now, and I can speak so well, and I'm being a very good boy, and I'm looking after Mummy. Mummy misses you, and I miss you, and we can't wait to see you. I wish I could have come with you, Daddy. And he got the message. He was so happy, he cried. His tears ran down his face when he heard his little boy talking to him like that. It made him so happy. He couldn't believe his happiness to hear his little boy's voice. But he longed to be near to his daddy, his little boy soon. And so, so the earth, but it took, so he was still some months away. The rocket ship was going faster and faster towards the planet Earth until eventually he started to see the sun in the horizon, which was nothing but a speck of light in the distance, getting bigger and slowly turning to the sun. And now he knew he was getting near the Earth. And slowly, slowly, the little speck of light got bigger and bigger as he could approach the sun. He still couldn't see the planet Earth, which would be tiny. But as he got closer, then he saw this little planet of blue and green, our planet Earth. Who saw, who saw it? He did. The man, the daddy in the spaceship. And he came down, and then the spaceship entered the Earth's atmosphere, and the spaceship started to heat up as it entered the atmosphere, because, of course, the, the atmosphere was burning the rocket outside, and he waited until he got until it was too, so hot that he pushed the button for the, for the parachutes, Psh! and the parachutes deployed, they opened up, and the rocket floated down, 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 down. It came with the parachutes and landed in the sea. And as it hit the sea, don't forget the rocket, the nose of the rocket was white hot with, from the re-entry, because as it, hits the, as it goes into the re-entry, it, it burns, 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 burns. And it went into the sea and went, bubble, 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 sizzle, 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 and then it cooled down. When it was cooled down, the man opened the hatch of the rocket and got out the life raft and jumped into the life raft while the rocket slowly sank to the bottom of the sea. What to the bottom of the sea? The rocket. But the man was down in the life raft. And then... What's a life raft? The life raft is like a big blow up. Like, a bit like your um, paddling pool. We blow it up. And it's got air inside. It floats on the sea. And you can sit inside and float. To get to rocket. So he's on the sea now, floating, waiting for his to be rescued. Eventually the, the space agency team from NASA, North American Space Agency, came to rescue him. What? Who is it? And then they took him back to his home. Who? Who is it? I don't know who I don't know the names. But when he got home, there was his wife and his, 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 his the wife, the mummy, and the little boy. And they were so pleased to see him. They cuddled him and kissed him. <laughs> That was the most happy moment on the love planet. Can you imagine how happy they were to see each other after so long being apart? Oh, they were ever so happy. Oh, and the little boy and the daddy danced and sang together and played together and did all the things you can imagine which little boys do with their daddy. Oh, they played football in the garden. They built snowmen in the garden. They built some sauce. It was not a snowman. Yes, they did everything little children do with their daddies. Well, good. 
Little boy bounced on the bed with happiness for his daddy. Bounce, 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 and obviously told him a very nice story. The little boy got a nice story from his daddy. Daddy, you know what daddy told him the story? No. Told him about the aliens that he'd seen and where he'd been <coughs> and what had happened to him and how lonely he'd been in space and how he'd missed his little boy. Ta-da. It was a lovely story. And then it was time to sleep. Did you like that story? I can't see anything. That's right, I can't see anything either. What's that mean? It means it's dark. But we can see something. We open the door a little bit. Okay. And you're now going to go to sleep. Can you put my mic back on? There we are. Good night, little boy. Do you want mommy to come and tell you a little story in Chinese? All right, okay then. I'll sort that out in a second. I love you. Really? Oh, that's nice. Okay, lie down now. I want to hug you. Okay, lie down. That's a good boy. Good night. I'll put a story in a minute. I'm just going to see mommy now.